The Battle of Waterloo was one of the most decisive battles in world history. After all, which battle has been immortalised by a pop group in the way that uh, the Swedish band ABBA uh, immortalised the Battle of Waterloo in their 1974 Eurovision Song Contest hit, Waterloo? What happened at Waterloo mattered intensely because it was decided there whether Europe should be dominated by the France of the Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte or should be a less hierarchically organized uh, system of states um, defended by the Duke of Wellington, who commanded the Allied army. Now, everybody's got their own explanation for who decided the Battle of Waterloo. Some people would argue it was the British Guards who heroically defended the Chateau of Hougoumont on Wellington's right wing. Others might say it was the Prussians who arrived in the nick of time to defeat Napoleon. My own explanation is that the principal victor of the Battle of Waterloo was a formation of 400 or so uh, Germans in the second light battalion of the King's German Legion, commanded by one Major George Berry. Now, the King's German Legion was made up mainly of Hanoverians, subjects of King George III of England, who had fled Germany to fight against Napoleon. They were assigned the tactically vital farm of La Haye Sainte at the centre of the Allied line. If you look at the map, you can see that the farm of La Haye Sainte straddles the main road north to Brussels. Napoleon had to go through there if he was to grapple with Wellington, prevent him from escaping, and defeat him before the Prussians arrived. He had very little time. This meant he couldn't maneuver, and in effect, he had to simply barge his way through. As a result, the riflemen defending La Haye were in the thick of things, pretty much from the early afternoon. On Sunday, the 18th of June, 1815, when the Battle of Waterloo commenced. The battle for La Haye for the farmhouse, raged throughout the afternoon. It was so intense that one is still finding uh, musket balls today. We're also fortunate in having a great many images of the Battle of Waterloo, and in particular of La Haye Sainte, uh, which are being exhibited at the University Library to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Waterloo. One can see, for example, the way in which the rest of the battle swirled around, pivoted around, as it were, the farmhouse. So take, for instance, the de legendary death of the British infantry commander, Sir Thomas Picton. You see it here rather romantically portrayed, uh, Picton uh, with a head injury bleeding uh, from his forehead. Um, he was felled at the crossroads very close to the farm of La Haye Sainte, which you can see in the background of this picture. Or take the famous cavalry engagements, be they the legendary attacks by the British Union and household cavalry brigades uh, somewhere in the middle uh, of the battle, uh, or not long afterwards, uh, the attacks ordered by the French Marshal Ney of his massed ranks of cuirassiers, dragoons, and lancers against the British and Allied infantry squares uh, on the ridge. Here in this picture, you can see uh, these events portrayed, again, in a somewhat stylized way, but you have in the foreground uh, French cuirassiers with their distinctive helmets, uh, and then you can see uh, further back um, the Allied infantry forming squares. They're wearing red uniforms. Uh, this means they're definitely British soldiers, uh, but they could be ordinary British regiments or line regiments of the King's German Legion, who also wore red uh, and who were likewise uh, part of the regular uh, British Army. Now, Major Baring defended the farm uh, for something like five hours. Eventually, he ran out of ammunition and was forced to withdraw. But he had held off Napoleon for so long that the Prussians had time to arrive 
and Napoleon ran out of time to defeat Wellington. So in effect, he was the victor of Waterloo. The Battle of Waterloo claimed many tens of thousands of casualties. Quite a large proportion of those were suffered in and around the farmhouse of La Haye Sainte. You can see this depicted um, in a number of pictures uh, in the university library. This one here shows the burial of the dead. And what's striking is if you look closely at the foreground, is the sheer number of fatalities who are being shoveled into a grave. What's remarkable also is the way in which the various gullies and ravines are being filled up with the bodies of the dead. And this means that the battlefield of Waterloo today, in which these uh, various gullies uh, which existed at the time uh, and in which uh, particularly French cavalry uh, and skirmishers lurked, um, these features of the landscape have changed. So what we see today in the Battle of Waterloo is in important respects not the same battlefield uh, that the protagonists encountered uh, nearly 200 uh, years ago. I'm happy to say, however, that the farmhouse of La Haye Sainte itself stands pristine and pretty much unchanged uh, from uh, the way it was uh, on the 18th of June, uh, 1815. Uh, before the Battle of Waterloo started. <laughs>